Humanity is at a turning point. Addressing the global climate change challenge needs to be the world's top priority. More than a century of burning fossil fuels, together with unequal and unsustainable use of energy and land, lifestyles and patterns of consumption and production have resulted in global warming of 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The 2023 synthesis report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change presents a comprehensive analysis of human-caused climate change and lays out pathways to available solutions. This report uh, clearly indicates that uh, we, we have, the world has the know-how, technology and tools to address uh, you know, this problem. The problem is, uh, those tools and knowledge has to be implemented and deployed at a much faster speed throughout the world. And for that to happen, there's a need for very close collaboration between developed and developing countries. And we also, rec we also recognize that there is still a large gap in financing support and also technology transfer uh, from developed to developing countries. And uh, this synthesis report indicates that those means of implementation is a critical enabler uh, for the world to achieve the climate stabilization goals. The extraordinary scope of the effort needed to limit global warming to one and a half degrees Celsius was highlighted by the IPCC in 2018. Five years later, a continuous rise in greenhouse gas emissions has made that challenge even more difficult. So we, we know the warming is due to us as humans from simulations that we undertake with and without human influence. We know we've warmed by 1.1 degrees centigrade the globe already. And we know that unless and until we reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions, we will continue to warm the planet the window of opportunity to limit warming to 1.5 is rapidly closing. The window of opportunity to limit warming to 2 degrees is equally perilously close. With every increment of warming, the severity of impacts across natural and human systems is projected to intensify. Changes in climate and extremes become more pronounced and widespread. We see changes like increases in heat waves and intense rainfall events that present risks to people and ecosystems around the world. The risks, impacts and related losses and damages escalate. And when these risks combine with other adverse events, they cascade across all sectors and regions and are becoming increasingly difficult to manage. Those who have historically emitted the least are the ones who are at the forefront of climate impacts. So those are the ones who are most vulnerable to the impact of human-caused climate change. And this is an important finding because this is important from a climate justice point of view and it links to some of the new findings. We are finding that losses and damages are already happening and again, losses and damages are being felt disproportionately by some of these more vulnerable communities. Almost half of the world's population live in regions that are highly vulnerable to climate change. Millions of people are already affected by food insecurity. Around 50% of the world's population is experiencing water scarcity for at least some part of the year. In recent decades, people in vulnerable regions face a 15 times greater chance of dying from floods, droughts and storms. Concerning specifically the rate of warming, even if global warming continues, slower global warming allows us to adapt more easily or with less difficulty. Of course, there are levels of warming where adaptation is not possible anymore and we are already reaching parts of these uh, limits on to adaptation. And this, the faster it goes and the higher we go, the more it will be difficult to adapt. At some point, we won't be able to adapt anymore. Deep and rapid reductions in greenhouse gas emissions can limit warming to 1.5 or 2 degrees. 
The best estimate of reaching 1.5 is in the early 2030s. It is possible to reduce warming by achieving and sustaining net negative carbon dioxide emissions. However, exceeding a warming level and returning to it presents risks to ecosystems um, and other aspects. The decisions made in this decade will determine the hotter and future world current and future generations live in. These decisions will impact life on Earth for thousands of years. Climate resilient development, implementing measures and actions to adapt to climate change while reducing or avoiding greenhouse gas emissions can enhance sustainable development and secure a livable future for all. The IPCC synthesis report shows that protecting, conserving and restoring ecosystems is really important for accelerating action on climate change in this decade. Many high carbon ecosystems, such as forests and peatlands, are valuable carbon stores that hold greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere and limit global warming. However, these ecosystems can only help us if we keep the level of global warming relatively low, such as by limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. This report recognises that climate, ecosystems and biodiversity and human societies are interdependent. Every action we take affects the Earth system. Effective and equitable conservation of approximately 30 to 50% of the Earth's land, fresh water and ocean will help ensure a healthy planet. And depending upon the national circumstances, uh, the countries can absorb our report's main uh, suggestions of uh, pursuing uh, climate resilient development so that they can develop their own economy while at the same time reduce carbon emissions. So aggregated together, the world as a whole will be able to achieve the zero carbon goal within the next three decades. Significant investment in developing countries can also avert rising risks, especially for vulnerable groups and regions. Where the transitions have to happen the fastest and have the least access to finances in order for that to happen is in developing countries. That is where 84% of the world's population lives. These are the places which are going to be urbanizing very fast. They are the young population. That's going to be the future of the world. So this is a, a message of hope. And as well, at the same time, this is an important message for the world to take in, to make the economy, make the development clean and climate friendly. The synthesis report was prepared by a team of 93 authors. It was the final element of IPCC's sixth assessment report and brought the sixth cycle to a close. In this cycle, the IPCC organized 19 plenary sessions, twice as many compared to any previous cycle. Many took place under challenging circumstances of COVID-19 pandemic. More than 780 scientists volunteered their time and expertise to work on IPCC reports. 41% of them were from developing nations. 33% of IPCC reports were female scientists. During the drafting of the reports, more than 100,000 pieces of scientific literature were assessed. The IPCC Secretariat ensured that these important reports were delivered on time to contribute to the critical international negotiation on climate change under the United Nations.